What's up, everybody? Dave Duford, Final Expense Agent Mentor, FEAgentMentor.com. Thank you for joining yet again for another hopefully useful, applicable, and fun and informational No BS Final Expense Sales Training live stream now seen on YouTube. It is 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and it is Monday, January 16th. I hold these training sessions pretty much now, at least for the time being, every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. So you're always welcome to join me uh, at that specific time uh, for uh, all sorts of topics and training on final expense. So like I said, thank you for joining me. And I uh, look forward to doing this wonderful program and broadcast on uh, final expense leads without having to spend money on buying them. So a little upfront, I don't know how can you say reframing of that uh, headline, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. The biggest thing when it comes into final expense is, and this is what happens when I talk to agents that are brand new, that want to work with me, or even if they don't, they're just wondering, well, how do I get started in final expense? All your top producers, if you go on convention and you ask them, what are they doing to be successful? The bottom line is they're being and they're successful because they have dialed into a lead program that gets duplicatable, replicatable results. And what you find is most of the time they're all doing the same exact thing. They're typically all doing some sort of direct mail paid type of lead program. So I do understand though, as a guy that recruits agents that deals with agents in a large scale national basis that not everybody is either willing or capable to get directly involved with direct mail from the beginning. So really what this webinar, this live stream should be about is how to do final expense successfully in alternative ways that cost minimal amounts of money. So some of the things, again, totally up front here, some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is going to cost something. But I promise you it won't ever cost as much as relatively compared to direct mail final expense leads. So just want to be upfront because after I posted this, I thought, well, the topics we're going to talk about, some of the stuff's going to cost money. Maybe, eh, maybe $100, $200 tops to get you started. But we're not talking about $2,000, $3,000 or anything about that because the reason you're here is because you're either – you either don't have the desire or the ability to pay for direct mail. And so you're looking for alternative ways to sell final expense without that heavy financial burden. So I want to assure you that what I'm going to show you is either completely free or very, very, very low cost or just a little bit of cost, but nothing so prohibitive that it's ridiculously silly to even talk about it on a uh, supposedly free lead program type of live stream. So I want to be upfront with you guys regarding that. And feel free as you listen and watch the stream, feel free to ask questions. I do see the questions come in live, so you're welcome to ask away if you got any particular questions. And then also, um, let's see here, um, let's get started. I've uh, kind of created a little bit of a uh, overview and a warning, uh, really, uh, before we get started. So it kind of ties back into the um, thing I mentioned about the top producers. The thing I don't want to convey uh, on the on this particular live stream is that there is, um, how do you say, there, are, uh, I don't want to say that following a non-direct mail program isn't viable or that you couldn't make sales. I just want to make sure that you understand that just because there are ways to do final expense leads without having to spend or invest your money in direct mail, which is the ideal way to do things. It doesn't mean that it's a replacement or that there's something that is better inherently. Again, in this business, I tell agents all the time, it's old, it's been around a long time. And the fact is, is most of the guys on, product, on, on, on convention all do the same thing. They're all doing direct mail leads. And so the, the question you gotta ask yourself is why do something that's terribly different when something already is working pretty well, okay? Why reinvent the wheel? You don't need to in this business. That's what's crazy about it, is that this business works so well that you can go out there with a stale, old, predictable, and even boring type of direct mail campaign, 
and get great results if you work the system. And what you find is that most do. So I want to just make that clear as well, that a lot of these methods are best used as a bridge to direct mail. Okay, they're not necessarily a replacement. The best agent that's going to use these particular methods really truly just doesn't have the capital or they're doing this part-time and they're looking for low risk ways to see a return on their investment of minimal money and time. And these are great for doing that, but my advice to you, this is what I tell all my agents too, is to take some of the proceeds from these methods I'm going to teach and bankroll yourself eventually into getting into, hopefully, eventually direct mail. Because that is typically where the top producers stay and never deviate from. They, they don't really go into these alternative methods all too much, although they are cool to do at times. They're really a way to get to that point. So hopefully that's clear. So let's start off with the old-fashioned ways to direct mail leads. Uh, sorry, direct mail leads, to lead generation. So the old-fashioned ways that we're going to talk about uh, first of all, we're going to talk about old-fashioned, old-fashioned ways of, 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 geez, I'm lack of words here today. I'm sorry, of generating final expense leads for free. Then we're going to go to what I would call like weird ways. Like you don't hear a lot about them, but I've either experienced them personally or I've talked to agents who have that have done these oddball things that have done very well. And um, lastly, I'm going to talk about my favorite way to generate leads with virtually zero cost. I think it's the most scalable, it's the most successful, it's one of the easiest ways if you can get over this one particular hurdle. And um, I have agents that really are in course to make six figures annually doing this particular program without any sort of supplementary leads and just following this one way. And this is the one program out of all of these that I think you could typically do in a way without using a traditional direct mail type of capacity. So. Let's get started with the old-fashioned ways to do uh, lead generation in the final expense business. So the first way is to use telemarketing, and, and that would be cold calling people on the phone. This way, just like you configure, is you're picking up a phone, you're calling it, you're dialing the number, and you're asking for an appointment to do a uh, give more information on life insurance. So what's cool about this method is that it's no cost if you just use the phone. Now you can add a little bit of cost, you know, around 100 bucks a month if you buy what's called a dialer. What this does is it uses and leverages multiple phone lines uh, at the same time to dial because most people don't pick the phone up these days, especially on unexpected numbers. And it allows you to call multiple lines and, and talk to more people consistently instead of sitting there and waiting for somebody to finally pick up the phone. So if you can spend that much and you can get leads, I mean, get a list of names, you can get right to work and start calling people right in your area to ask for appointments about selling final expense. Uh, I have used a couple of dialers I would recommend are sales dialers. Uh, I think it's salesdialers.com. They're around 100, 130 bucks. Another one that was good is Mojo Dialer. I used that once as well. Uh, I think it's a little more expensive. Basically do the same thing. You're not going to notice a quality difference between either. Just look at both and decide which works best for you. Uh, very few of them are doing any more free trials because a lot of people would use them for a week or two or a month and then hang it up, literally, uh, because telemarketing wasn't working for them for whatever reason. So you're going to have to come out some kind of money. I don't know of any free offers that you can try out for a while. But one of those is a good price, works fine. As far as data, where to get cheap data from, uh, I would recommend ListShack. I think that's what it is, ListShack.com. It's 50 bucks a month. For unlimited downloads, I think up to 25,000 names, maybe less than that. But really, if you're an independent agent doing your own cold calling, you know, you're looking at probably 5,000 names is the most you could do if you're cold calling probably 20 hours a week. So you're going to be fine. 50 bucks a month is more than fair. And combine that with a $100 dialer for less than 200 bucks, you could sit down, cold call, develop leads, and uh, hopefully sell a few policies. The one method I would recommend with telemarketing, if you do, if you go the cold calling method, is to leverage the fact that all these people get the direct mail pieces uh, that we solicit um, through the mail all the time. And I would reference in so many words, basically saying script wise, something like this: Hey, this is David Dew Ford. I'm calling about that postcard that you received in the mail about final expense programs for senior citizens. We didn't receive back your card. I'm just following up on you about that. Wanted to see if you had 
uh, 10 minutes tomorrow to speak. Would 2 o'clock or 10 be better? Something like that. That's just right off the cuff of my head. Might refine that a little bit. But the idea is they all get these postcards, and most of them wonder what it's about. And you could tell them, hey, I'm the guy that follows up with people who get these cards. And then they'll have an interest or they're not. But that's a way to do it because that's the most relevant thing that you can connect to. And people who are interested are going to say yes to that. How much business can you expect to do off of telemarketing? Um, my recommendation is to, uh, I wouldn't be cold call, call calling any less than 15 to 20 hours a week. And I would expect maybe, oh, I don't know. When I did it, uh, at one point in my career, I think I cold called for 20, 15, 20 hours. I made three sales. But hey, I didn't have to spend anything beyond the dialer itself. Um, but that's kind of the upside. I know several agents that started off this way that were uh, had more desire than money that got on a dialer and called for 20 hours for the first month or two, made sales, and, and bankrolled themselves up to a paid mail kind, kind of program. So there you have it. Um, just understand that you got to put the time into the telemarketing. You know, you're trading dollars. You're trading your time. Obviously, you're trading for your lack of dollars for the, the time requirement to work through the names in order to get enough set so that you can go hopefully make a few sales. So it takes time. It actually becomes boring telemarketing, as anybody will tell you. You say the same script a million times, and uh, it tends to bore the crap out of me. Chained to a desk ain't how I like to be in this business. All right, so that's telemarketing. Let's talk about cold door knocking or cold canvassing. Great method that still works fine. Essentially, just like described, you go door to door, you door knock unexpectedly, and you just ask for an appointment to review coverage or show you options about final expenses. Uh, best way I've seen do, done, this done, uh, I actually went on a ride along with a buddy of mine up in Athens named Lewis. Uh, he, the old guys from yesteryear, and I say that with all respect, it, that's how they were taught. They didn't know any different. You had to go door to door. It was just part of the deal. And typically for him, I want to say his ratio is for every 30 knocks, he'd get about 10 or 15 appointments and maybe make three to five sales. And so the goal is to try to do, maybe, maybe not be that high, it might be even lower than that, maybe one sale for every 30. That's probably a little bit more like it. So the goal is to knock in as many doors and just try to get appointments. And what I found that worked really well is that I think it's better just to knock without a list and not so much worry that are you calling on a senior or not because you can retool the pitch because everybody needs life insurance. So age is just kind of a small factor. So, but it's easier as opposed to trying to follow a list, going down the street, seeing if this person is here versus driving down the street and seeing a car is pulled up in the driveway. You know you got somebody who's going to answer the door. And the big thing with door knocking is anybody, whether they door knock leads or cold call, is people who answer the door is the key thing. You can spend a lot of time working a special list, but nobody's there during the day or so. They're not there and you spend a lot of time behind a windshield that doesn't provide you actual any um, results. It's talking to people that does. And the ratios typically play to your favor as long as you get the knocks in the people who are actually there. So with that said, what's my recommendation? I would recommend door knocking at least 20 to 30 knocks a day. Uh, it's heavy, heavy, heavy activity. But you should be able to sell three to five policies a week like that. Again, but you've got to be willing to do 100 to 150 door knocks a day. I learned this uh, from a guy that is an expert in the um, voluntary payroll deduct business. His, his business model is 30 businesses a day asking for the owner uh, either to sell them basic insurance or to um, potentially sell a voluntary payroll deduct where they do a seminar or a talk in front of employees and kind of enroll them. So that's his method and that's kind of the traditional method anyway and it works really well by just going in and asking for appointments and it, it works just fine for residential too. You just ask for employment, and you're going to sell some, you're not sell others. It works, but it's it's hard work. It's tough. You got to get out there and see the people and grind it out. There's no doubt about that. And um, you're going to get to reject it a hell of a lot more than you're actually going to actually see people. So um, door knocking works, but you got to have the capability and taste to do it. So um, a looks like I got a couple of questions here. I'm going to go ahead and address them. Uh, I'm going to have to watch this. Hey, Daniel, how you doing? I got your email, by the way, Daniel, about the hard copy book. Uh, I think I responded to it, but I'm waiting on the edit to be finished. It was supposed to be finished yesterday. It was, and I got to follow up with the person. So uh, I will hopefully have that done uh, here this week. Uh, your question is, when you upload, uh, keep losing the stream. If a comment shows up, thank you. Yes, I do see it. So it may be of something on YouTube's end. I notice it as well, but it's 
cool on my end. I see myself playing right now on the screen. Uh, R. Salehi, how you doing, sir? What's your thoughts on placing door hanger marketing? Um, not for sure. I don't think it beats talking to people. Uh, what I would not do is go door to door with hangers and not attempt to knock. If you've made it so far up the driveway, up the walkway, to the door, to not knock on the door, that's a waste of a huge opportunity. Just because somebody can look at a door uh, hanger and throw it in the trash. Remember, most solicitations, whether it's final expense or anything, at best, 1%, 2% response rate. So you're knocking on 100 doors, you might get one call or two calls. I mean, that's probably what to expect. Whereas if you've got them to answer the door, a lot better response rate. Uh, you're going to get more, way more appointments than hanging out or putting out hangers. Again, I would only do that if I was in an apartment complex and I knew the person running it wasn't going to throw me out or curse me out. I just think that the hangers are, and I'm not saying you per particularly or anything like that, but it's an avoidance behavior, uh, meaning, you know, hey, I got a hanger put on the door, great. You know, if you follow up with the door knock and they're not there, okay, cool. At least you have something to go on. But your goal should be to talk to people and don't let the hanger be an impediment between you and actually prospecting because the hangers aren't going to be nearly as effective as you think they would be. Okay, keep asking questions, by the way, if you got them, guys. Back to, back to the um, <clears throat> cold calling methods, or I should say no-cost methods to generate leads. So we've talked about telemarketing. We've talked about cold canvassing. They all work. You just got to work really, really, really hard and be persistent in making sure your activity is there to support what your expectations are. That's the biggest thing that most agents miss out on. Again, most salespeople in general anyways, they don't do enough activity to sustain the production required, or I should say the, pr the production required, the activity is not there to meet that. So you got to make sure you hit the phones, you hit the doors in order to get the kind of sales I was talking about. Okay, so now let's talk about some weird ways to generate leads without much expense at all. Now some of these I'm just about to mention here cost a little bit, just again, fair warning, but again, not a huge expense. The first way, I've always wanted to try this particular method. Um, I never did, but I got an agent who was interested in doing it, and she did pretty well. She actually bought a booth at a flea market. And so what, what that is, is she basically negotiated a small table at a fairly high traffic flea market for like 10 bucks a weekend, you know, both Saturdays and Sundays. She set up a simple sign, uh, she put out flyers, and basically waited for people to come up here. She wasn't hustling. You know, she wasn't getting out there, hey, sign this here and see if you can win a free prize or some kind of, you know, gift giveaway thing. You know, she waited on people to come to her. She's very low-key about it. And what she found is she's getting about 15 leads and she's making about one to two sales a week like that. Now, what happened is, is as time went by, one of the things about flea markets is they get repeat go goers. They get people who go to the flea markets every week, every other week, every month. And so... The, there was a th interest fall off in that flea market type of crowd because she had talked to a lot of them that would have been interested anyway. And so I saw a huge viability. If you get, if start getting sales with anything, it's about making the numbers work metrically wise. But so think about it. If your average sale is $600 uh, per year for a policy, final expense policy, you're making one sale a week and you're spending 20 bucks for a weekend, that's a 30 to 1 return on your investment. Now, it may not be the best use of your time on the weekends, but if you ain't if you got more time than money, hey, that's a lot of money for the time that you spend into it. So don't put that down at all. Now, how could you have made this potentially better? I've got a few ideas. So the first idea I would have done is I would have turned this into some sort of prize giveaway. One of the things I would have done is created a high perceived value prize that wouldn't cost me too much money and then basically have people fill out slips and forms along with a quick survey on life insurance and um, some basic interest level uh, of in it. What, what you would probably happen is that your, your amount of leads would probably go up quadruple to five times as much. And, but you, in extraction for, with, I'm sorry, with the goal of potentially winning the gift, in exchange what you would have to require is that they would fill the whole slip out and that they also would understand that you're going to follow up with them and they'd agree to it and all that with a, a phone call about the gift as well as the life insurance. 
that's easy to do and you'd still get a lot of people fill it out. And you could take from those lists or from those leads and find the 10 to 20% that probably would be appointments and then go run appointments and probably sell a lot more insurance overall than giving away, than not doing anything at all as far as not giving a gift away. Gift ideas, you know, high perceived value stuff. Um, oh, I would say, I always thought it'd be funny to give like a complete set of Walker, Texas Ranger DVDs or Bonanza or something that mimics the people that we talk to. They all watch Westerns, as you'll see, and do that kind of thing. So, you know, and you, just something like that. Uh, last thing I'll say is if you do anything like that, make sure you're compliant with the whole giveaway stuff. You know, there's different states, different rules. I'm not an attorney, blah, blah, blah. You know the bit. So, but that idea I think would be very effective and you'd get a lot more leads and have a lot more potential out of. Um, you may even be able to, to leverage it and do multiple flea markets at a time and just set out a, a fishbowl, a, a stand, a sign, enter to win. You don't have to man all the signs to get people to sign up to try to win. And you could just rotate between two or three at a time and generate a lot more leads that way. Again, with minimal cost investment. I've never tried that. It's just a crazy idea I figured I'd share. Don't blame me if it doesn't work. But it's a lot better doing nothing. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to do any of that, but still want to do the flea market, got pretty good results from a basic low-key approach. The second way, or the second weird way to generate uh, final expense leads, this is, now this is super cool. Uh, bandit signs. Y'all know what bandit signs are? Of course you do. All we did see over the past couple of months are vote for Trump and vote for Hillary signs. And so that's what I'm talking about. If you can think of political signs and, you know, you know, a stump removal, tree removal, um, all sorts of crap that people sell and stick to, you know, light poles, those kind of signs are what I'm talking about. They work awesome. Um, the cost of what we've seen is about 100 to $200 for about 50 to 100 It depends on who you buy from. you got to kind of call around so you'll do it. You set up a simple sign, say something very simple, direct uh, signage, buy burial insurance now is one we've used, and then the phone number that you want the calls to be directed to. And just go out there one Saturday morning and spend a couple hours placing signs. And what I've found from the guys that do this, they get inbound calls and they get really good sales from those calls. And what happens is they're either really good leads, like they're buyers, or they suck, which is good. You're not going to spend a lot of time with the people who are just curious. But the people who are really interested are calling that number. They're highly, very qualified prospects, many times more than not. And I've seen enough return on the investment compared to what it costs to put the fire, put the put the signs out that it was like really good and really worth considering. So the last thing I'll tell you about those, you just got to be very mindful of the municipality rules when it comes to signs. And one particular guy who was doing this put these signs up. Cops called him, so you got to take these down. We're gonna find you 500 bucks a day, whatever. You know, they give you a warning. So just make sure you know your rules. A lot of places don't care, you know. So you just got to kind of experiment. Make sure that you're being compliant, all that stuff. So, but it works well if you can if you can do it. Uh, just because the nature of the callers are always people. Who, I mean, think about it. They're responding to buy life insurance now. You're usually pretty interested when the sign says buy life insurance now. Pretty good. So um, I like that. I would probably do that if money was tight um, and I had more time than money and plaster those things all over the place and self-generate my own leads. So that's the two weird methods that don't cost a lot. Um, the last little bit here that I want to mention is my very favorite way to do seminars. Or I should, there I go, but I blew, I blew my cover. <laughs> my favorite way to generate leads with virtually zero costs are seminar marketing type of, of, of model situation. So seminar marketing essentially is where you talk to a group of people who meet the demographic profile of a final expense buyer, typically small groups, lots of places with, with our demos where you can go, churches, senior activity centers, senior residences, um, churches, I mentioned churches, uh, other places like that. Wherever you can find a group of seniors, it's a worthwhile attempt to pitch what it is that we do. I really like them because, first of all, there's groups like this all over the place. It's entirely scalable. 
Um, it doesn't matter if you're in a rural area, a metro area, a middle of the road area. There's going to be places with seniors that meet as a group. And those are perfect opportunities to spend 10 or 15 minutes educating them about final expense options. What I have found is the guys that follow the teachings I do on a more detailed basis in my program are usually writing between one and two cases of, per seminar. And they usually write them the same day as a one call close. The power of a seminar is it puts you in a position of being the authority. They already trust you and like you from the fact that you get up there and speak. And the implied understanding is that anybody that gets up to speak unless they sound like a complete moron, is an expert. So usually it's just a function of figuring out what works best and fits the budget. Most of these people who do have sincere interest that meet with you, buy. Uh, I have an agent of all places in Idaho who over the past six months has written 75000 in commission exclusively, well, almost 98% 90, exclusively off of seminars. This guy has not done, virtu has done, has not done any large-scale direct mail. In fact, he hates it. What he tells me every time I talk to him. In fact, he did direct mail, and it was a total flop. For him, it was. It's great for most people, but for him, it went really well. And then he's decided this year his goal is to make 150000 net after expenses, which is virtually very little, by doing three to four seminars a week. And what's great about this is that how he does it, he's at home at night. He's not out in the kitchen table at 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night. It's a very easy setup. The thing with seminars and the reason, and this is really to the advantage of the person who does seminars, the biggest advantage of seminars is that most people are deathly afraid of doing seminars. Everybody mostly is afraid of public speaking. I am horrified of it. However, I got over my weakness and did it anyway. Did 80 seminars back in 2015. And I realized it's so freaking easy and it's no reason to be upset about talking to a bunch of old people. No disrespect intended but it's no big deal they assume you know what you're talking about because you do even if you're brand new you know a lot more than they do and the fact is is you're giving them food and drinks and they like it they're happy they're eating sugar you know they're going to be feeling pretty good and so the power of the seminars is just the fact that you have already created by the by the unwillingness of most people to talk to a group you're segmenting yourself in a niche or in a marketing niche where few people will go into because of the in inherent belief that it's fearful. It's, I can tell you all day long that it's silly to be afraid of doing uh, seminar marketing so you can develop some of the best low-priced final expense leads on the face of the planet. I can tell you all day, up and all day, all day long that it's the dumbest thing. Just shut up and do it. I can tell you to do all this stuff. But I already know that 95% of the people who are listening to this won't do it because of some fear-based, you know, limiting belief pattern. And again, I can say all this stuff because I was there too and I felt the same way, but I got over it. And, um, but that's, that's the advantage, that's to the advantage of the person who will do it because there's so many opportunities to speak about this. There's so many groups, so many places you can go. They, they, it's so easy, and I use that word very rarely, I call it the E word. I don't want to use the E word except when it really makes sense. The truth is, it's easy to book seminars if you just ask for them and know who to speak to and how to pitch the benefits behind doing the seminars. Most people get into and, and, and present to most places that they talk to. And, um, you know, you just don't have as much money at risk in, in, a, in a manner like you would with direct mail if the campaign's bad or you got a bad bunch of leads or you just had a bad couple of rough weeks. You're not going to be out a lot of money in a seminar environment and there's just a lot more upside potential or I should say a lot more ROI potential with minimal upfront risk. That's the real power with seminars. And so I highly recommend, it's one of those programs I teach all of my agents to do just because it's so powerful. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I beg, I get on my knees as much as possible. Just if you do it, you can make a lot of money. It's fun to do. It's not nearly as a big deal as you think. Every time I start talking about it, I start getting hot about it too because it was cool. It's fun when I did them for about a six-month period of time. And it would be something I would definitely recommend um, if you don't have the money. It's something that seriously does work fairly well and is successful. So, guys, that is it for me. I don't really see any more new um, comments or questions. I want to thank you so much for watching this live stream. I hope the stream went well. Uh, I'm seeing myself uh, not move on the screen here. 
But either way, if you got questions or comments about any kind of lead source that's free, maybe I didn't mention it, or if you got any questions about anything I've mentioned so far, feel free to leave me a question, a comment. I'll be happy to direct it uh, specifically and individually. I certainly don't mind at all helping out if, if I can. And um, I will see you guys next week. Uh, in fact, next week, what we will be talking about, just to give you a little bit of a heads up. Oh, crap, I forgot my list here, so I don't know. So anyways, I'm sure it'll be something enjoyable and fun. And I will plan on seeing you next Monday at 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, right here on YouTube. That's where we're going to do all of our live streams going forward. My name is David Duford. If you have any questions or comments or would like me to help you out in any form or fashion possible, feel free to go to my website and fill out the contact form to reach out to me. And thanks so much, guys, for listening again. Y'all take care. Good to see you.